Step 1. Don't. I mean, there's absolutely no need to. Just go to any 3D model website, search for free models and just download. Step 2. Find some reference. To give you an idea of how important this is, I challenged myself to sculpt a horse with and without reference. I mean, I'm no professional, but this, this is not a horse. Just doing the actual sculpting, that's the easy part. I mean, just enable dynamic topology, bring this value down a little bit, use these different tools that you have. Now you can use this snake hook tool to kind of grab things around like this. You can mask areas out, you can add layers like clay, you can smooth it out. I mean, there are tons of tutorials on that out there. The hard stuff is to actually get the sculpt to look good. You can basically just download pictures that you think will be useful and import them as reference images into Blender. Or if you have a second monitor, which at the time I do not, you can use this free software called Puref and just drag and drop some good reference pictures like this. Step 3. Start with basic shapes. Start off by building the basic shapes, then go on to the mid-level details and finally start working on some fine details. This also makes it much easier to check that your proportions aren't off. Step 4. Use the right tools. Technically, you can use your mouse, but that's just making your life unnecessarily hard for yourself. If you have a very limited budget, get something basic, like the Vacuum Intus S that I got right here. Where I live, I got this for just over $83, but you can probably find it for even cheaper. Something like this will definitely get the job done and is already so much better than sculpting with your mouse. If you're a bit more serious about the whole sculpting thing, a tablet that I can highly recommend is this Sense Labs pen tablet that I'm currently using. Sense Labs did send me this one to review and I've been loving it so far. What you get for that extra money is a bunch of handy features and a generally better build quality and ergonomic design. I especially love this scroll wheel thing that they sent me as well. I have it linked up to my brush size in Blender and that just speeds up my workflow a lot. I'm sure there are other tablets that will work as well, but these are just the ones I've been personally using. Also, if you're interested in checking out the Sense Labs tablet, they sent you guys a little discount, the link is in the description. Step 5. Sheet. If you already have your reference images imported into Blender, you can try using those as a guide. For example, if you're sculpting a face, you can get an image with a side profile. Just put that right behind your sculpt like this. Then you can just use that as a guide to improve your proportions. Is that cheating? Probably if you ask an artist, but I say do whatever you can to make the final render better. Doing this will also help you gradually start to learn freehand sculpting and give you that little extra confidence to help you get started. Step 6. Repeat. Again. Again again and again. Look, there's no escaping it. Sculpting in 3D is kinda hard, and it takes a bit of practice to get right. But the good news is that if you use some of the things that I talked about in this video, and just keep sculpting, you'll without a doubt get better. And I just wanna say this again, by far the most important thing that you can do is to learn to use reference. So give it a try, and tell me how it went. If you want to support me on Patreon, I'm going to link it down below, as well as the Sense Labs tablet, if you're interested in that. Anyways, that's it. See you in the next one.